welcome to Art Connection. I'm Jessica McKay. Today we are going to check out the annual Artists Studio Tour. This is a chance for the community to go into artists' studios and homes to check out their methods for how they create works of art. Let's go check it out. Well, we are here with Lois Olson, who is part of the Artist Studio Gallery and involved with the tour. Lois, can you please tell us a little bit about the tour? Well, this is a tour where the artists open up their studios and we invite the public to come in and see them in their studio and some other artists are outside. Everybody's showing their work and you can talk to the artists and uh, we have about eight different homes that you can go to on the tour. and. Our gallery is made up of about 60 artists. So this is a really wonderful opportunity it for is. the community to get out and get to know and see local artists right. and what they do, of which you are one. Yes. And uh, we have some of your work behind you here. This was from a man who came and played live saxophone and I just got inspired by watching him play. So it has a lot of motion in it. And this was kind of a day when we went over to uh, Portuguese Bend to do plein air painting. And it was very soft and mellow. And uh, this was a bunch of um, uh, sunflowers and some lilacs that I had that, um, you know, lent itself to a, um, a pastel painting. So I work abstractly also in acrylic and um, I do oils. I, I like to use all the different mediums in different ways. I love to use watercolor, so you'll see a lot of variation in my work. Now, Lois, uh, how long have you been involved with the Art Center and this tour? Golly, since I moved here. Oh. Yeah, I was here before there was an Art Center here, when it was down in Malaga Cove. And uh, it was really started by a group of artists who really, really wanted to have a place where they could come and paint. So. That's how this came about. We've been having a fashion show up here today, and we have a beautiful wearable art here. We are here with another artist at the Art Center, Karen Wharton. Um, Karen, I see that you have some really gorgeous paintings of big cats and wild animals, so can you uh, show us a little bit what you do? Sure. Um, I do mostly wild cats, but I also do other wildlife. Uh, mostly lions, tigers, leopards, this is basically showing the process of this painting. This is the finished product. It's called Lioness Approach. And what I did was I started out with some research photographs. A friend had been on safari, gave me all of her photographs. So there was one particular lioness that I liked. So this is the process of the, that I went through and the background. And um, I kind of focus on the eyes and the hair. And so I just was trying to show the technique of how I do the hair and painting with the brushes. And it's all an oil painting. Okay, and I, I, I imagine some of the most interesting and hardest part is getting the texture of the fur and everything. Is that, does that take a lot of patience or? It's a lot of layering. Um, so I start just with a brown paint and then I'm layering uh, kind of light to darks. But I use special horsehair brushes so that I get a random hair effect. Um, and different brushes, whether I'm doing the longer hair or the shorter hair. So how long have you been um, involved with the studio tour? This is my second year. In the first year, I was at a home in San Pedro. Hey, I'm here with Don Crocker, who's one of the original participants in the Artist Studio Tour. You've been doing it a long time, right, Don? I've been doing it for 10 years. We started 10 years ago, so we're very proud to be doing this again. And uh, we've been very, very happy with how many people have come and how many people have enjoyed our art and, and uh, picked out a piece for their collections. Can you uh, give us a little bit of a, what you consider your style and method? I wanted to uh, replicate the uh, beautiful work that's done by the California Plain Air Impressionists. So I studied under some very fine outdoor painters, learned how to do sunsets, learned how to do night paintings, learned how to do how to paint outside under all conditions and uh, really enjoy it and I do and there's so much beauty in California and also I've painted in Alaska quite a bit I've taken my grandkids up to Alaska and had a wonderful time seeing the great beauty that's in the wilderness up there and I, I was a backpacker and did a great deal of hiking in the high Sierra and I'm working from photographs because that was years ago I see everything from mountainscapes to seascapes to field workers to uh, industrial and ag agricultural. Um, and I, you do have a lot of uh, really beautiful light in your painting. 
Light is what plein air art is all about, but it includes night, uh, like the moon and, and, the, and the lights from habitation and from boats. It includes the uh, uh, sunsets and sunrises, as well as fog. Uh, you, you can have beautiful, beautiful paintings. Of course, Monet painted some very famous paintings in the fog. So it's not just bright, sunny days. Weather is a real important part of uh, painting, and you'll see clouds and, and weather in virtually all the great paintings that are done by the plein air impressionists. And so I've tried to make sure that I always look, that we, we, I always paint no matter what, whatever the weather is, uh, because sometimes it makes it very unique and very beautiful. What do you think is your, your favorite subject to paint? I know you do a lot of variety, but do you have something that's your favorite? I think night painting is the most exciting. With a full moon coming across water and then start throwing its uh, light across the water and you see the waves, for example, where there's waves and how the light touches not only the top of the wave but sometimes the face of the wave. It's just very beautiful at night. It's a really neat uh, time to, to paint. There's not very many people that do it, so it's not, it's not something that everybody does. Also, down at the harbor, there's so many beautiful lights and, and stuff going on down at the harbor, especially when they're working at night on, cruise, on ships with the, with the cranes. We are here with Jan Napolitan, who is another artist on the studio tour, and she's a ceramicist as well as an artist. Jan, can you uh, give us a little bit of a look at what you do? Well, I brought some pieces for showing what the process is. To make the colanders, you add the, the handles and any kind of decoration that you would put on, but then you put them in the fur. The first firing, a bisque firing, or biscuit firing, and this is fired to 1850 degrees, and it takes the water out of the body and hardens the clay but it is still absorbent. So at this point, the glaze is applied, the water in the glaze is absorbed into the clay body, and the minerals and oxides that are in the glaze itself then are deposited on the outside of the piece. So then the piece goes in the kill. For the second firing, and this time it goes to 2330 degrees and it becomes stoneware. So it becomes stone. The glaze has completely fused with the clay body. It is sturdy and it is ready to sand the bottom then when it comes out of the kill and it's ready for use. Well, let's go take a look at some of your other pieces. All right, well, we're over here at the, uh, some more of your beautiful pieces. And um, well, I have to say, you must have the most interesting kitchen at home. I'm sure you have many of these pieces that you use in your own kitchen. So, <laughs> yes. I, I mean, I go to the store and I buy, you know, just the normal stuff. But it must be so fun and exciting to be able to make your own pieces. It's wonderful to make your own pieces, the different forms that I, I uh, use. And I do enjoy cooking myself. So, uh, it's... A kind of a dual thing, you know, love to cook and love to make the pots that the food goes in. Well, we're here with Vicki Williams, who's a jewelry artist, and her work is displayed at the gallery. Uh, Vicki, why don't you show us some of your beautiful pieces and describe them for us? Well, welcome, Jessica. This is our, our new location. We just relocated from the Village Center. Very happy to be in the promenade here. And uh, we've got our showcase of jewelry. Uh, we actually have three jewelry artists. Is it all right if I uh, take a closer look yeah. at that one? Yeah. This is a real fun one. This is a recent find. This is a titanium druzy, and that gives it its, it's a, a sparkle, a natural ge geode, and this is mixed with the tea opal, African yellow jade, and pearl. All right. Well, now we're over here where you're giving a bit of a demonstration about uh, how you create your pieces. So yeah. can you uh, take us through your process? For the studio tour, we're doing demonstrations throughout the day, and uh, today I'm showing the special findings that I hand make. Uh, so what it starts out as is a 14 gauge wire, and we can shape this to create our hook, and then we go over to our small anvil, and we're going to actually rot the wire and this hardens it so that it will 
hold its shape. Oh, just like a blacksmith, but on a smaller scale. <laughs> a mini blacksmith here. Jewelry design is, is creative, but there's also engineering aspects to it. So it gives it, you, oh, you I know, see. you've got a unique handmade, one of a kind piece. It's nice and sturdy now, where it was bendable before. Before it was just wire that you could very easily bend. Oh, well, that's fascinating. Um, so how do you decide what stones to put into a piece? Uh, in this case, uh, this is a fossilized coral, and it is just so unique to itself that I just thought I would keep the design a little bit more simple and then work within the colors, again, using the yellow African jade and the tiger eye. Well, the Artist Studio Tour is always a lot of fun, and I encourage you, if you would like to check it out, to go to their website at www.artist-studio-pvac.com to find out more information.